Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. So, we are landing at Las Vegas McCarran Airport. And as we land, we can see the Strip from the air. The Strip, just in case you don't know, is the main boulevard where all the big hotels are, such as the Stratosphere Tower, the Circus Circus, the Wynn and Anchor, the Venetian, Paris area. The green one is the MGM Grand, which is where we're staying. We have arrived at Las Vegas. As soon as you enter the terminal, you realize you're in Vegas. There's slot machines everywhere. We take a taxi to the MGM Grand, which is normally a rather pricey hotel, but during the weekdays it is very reasonable. The weekend, however, is another story, so we'll stay somewhere else then. But for now, let's live it up and enjoy. Las Vegas always gives me a headache. We got a pretty good room. And of course, everything outside is green because the hotel is green. We have a nice TV. And most importantly, hmm, mini bar. And finally, our restroom. Hello, everybody. We are at the MGM Grand. Yay, electric shades. I know, I get silly sometimes. Good night. Good morning, Vegas. We go out to explore the strip a little bit. We take the bridge to the Tropicana. And then the New York, New York. And the Monte Carlo. We haven't been here for a couple of years, so some things have changed since the last time we visited Sin City. There is this new complex uh, called City Center with uh, street art, restaurants, uh, shopping mall, and a couple of new hotels uh, such as the area. Quite nice, actually. This is the mall inside city center. It is the Chinese New Year, so everything is decorated accordingly. We see something odd with the strip. Helicopters flying around. We don't really know what it is until we realize that there is no traffic. The strip has been closed by the police as there was a horrible shooting the previous night between two guys who left the hotel in their cars, which resulted in a fatal accident with a taxi cab. Talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time for the poor people in the cab. Very sad. We, the tourists, however, are taking advantage of the situation, taking pictures, having the strip all to ourselves. At the Paris Hotel, we take a taxi to downtown. Here in the downtown area, we visit the recently opened Neon Boneyard. The Neon Boneyard is a museum dedicated to Las Vegas history through the evolution of its neon and other electric signs. Our guide, a fellow named Troy, is really passionate about his job and the history of Las Vegas, a city where old buildings are quickly replaced by shiny new ones. We learned about the evolution of signs from small ones designed for people arriving on horseback and how they evolved so they could be seen by people driving at 60 miles per hour on the highway. They built taller and shinier signs as the times changed and the old hotels were demolished or renovated. I fully recommend this tour. They would let you go to the roof and watch the sign raise it a little higher. The Stardust without a star at the top of their sign. Part of the museum building itself was originally the lobby of La Concha Hotel, which was transported to this location piece by piece. After the museum, we walk a few blocks to Fremont Street. The walk itself is a little scary due to all the homeless people hanging around. This a large canopy above on Fremont Street becomes a large screen at night, uh, displaying a great audiovisual show which is called the Fremont Street Experience. Many of the great old-style Vegas casinos are still here. Let's go inside the Golden Nugget. The Golden Nugget is one of the oldest casinos in the city. It, it was built in 1946. 
A section of the aquarium facing the swimming pool actually contains full-grown sharks. No kidding. We continue walking on Fremont Street until we reach the Plaza, perhaps one of the most iconic hotels in Vegas. Okay, it is time to go back. Some of these neon signs on the streets are actually classic originals. They have been restored by the people at the Neo Museum. Last but not least, we try our luck at El Cortez, which is probably the last casino in Vegas that still has slot machines that accept coins. Okay, we are leaving Las Vegas, like in the movie. The first stop in our road trip is going to be Hoover Dam. On the way, we pass by Boulder City and the Lake Mead Recreational Area. As we arrive, at first we walk on the Mike O'Callaghan Pat Tillman Memorial Bridge, yeah that's a mouthful, also known as the Hoover Dam Bypass. We get a commanding view of the huge concrete structure that creates Lake Mead, also known as Hoover Dam. The bridge opened in 2010 and was built to bypass the old section of the highway down there which went over the dam. This is also the border between the states of Nevada and Arizona and the Pacifica Mountain time zones. It has the widest concrete arch in the Western Hemisphere and is the second highest bridge in the United States. Next, uh, we proceed to visit the dam itself. Hoover Dam was considered an engineering marvel and the largest dam in the world at the time of its construction in the 1930s. 96 workers lost their lives during the construction, but Contrary to urban legend, none of them is buried in the concrete. It is also famous for the Art Deco design of its uh, four towers, spillways and power plant. As we walk back and forth, we encounter this uh, small monument, which marks the border between Nevada and Arizona. 1 p.m. It's noon. <laughs> 1 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> it is noon. noon. <laughs> there are also these uh, Illuminati-looking statues a monument dedicated to the triumph of scientific accomplishment. It is considered good luck to rub their feet, so if you believe in that, rub away and go right back to Vegas and hit the roulette. We drive on top of the dam into the Arizona side. Wait, wait, wait! Let's take a picture with the Arizona sign. Come on, people, let's move it along. Let's go. Mm. Finally! Oh crap, we almost ran them over. We park uh, to get this great view of the structure. And further up, we get an even better view. Okay, it's time to hit the road again. Let's continue towards the Grand Canyon. We continue due east as we immerse ourselves into the heart of Native American land, the Walapai, the Havasupai, and further down, the Hopi and Navajo. A quarter of Arizona is American Indian reservations. Did you know that? We stop for this uh, scenic view of the Colorado River. And to buy some Native American jewelry. We continue on Route 93 and then Interstate 40 for the long drive towards the south rim of the Grand Canyon. 
It was our original intention to take historic Route 66, but it is getting late. We are driving through the desert towards the Grand Canyon. I made a small uh, navigational error, not navigation, time error, and uh, we're gonna arrive there right at sunset. Uh, I didn't take into account that the Grand Canyon was in central, uh, I mean, the mountain time, and uh, Las Vegas was in Pacific time. So. The sight of the red boots in the distance tells us we're almost there. It is getting dark as we arrive to the Grand Canyon National Park. We do get to see some wildlife on the way. We are practically racing against time to reach the south rim before sunset. And we finally make it to the Bright Angel Lodge. The first view of this wonder of the world at sunset is truly breathtaking. Coming here at Bright Angel Lodge. And close the door behind me, it's freezing outside. And we got a partial view of the Grand Canyon. That night, uh, we have dinner at the Arizona Room, right on the Bright Angel Lodge, which is the hotel where we're staying. It's uh, Southwestern inspired food with some great Arizona wine. Actually, I didn't know Arizona made wine, so it's a pleasant surprise. After dinner, I take some night photography. Taking all these shots, I break my travel tripod in the process. Actually, taking this vertical picture, it's, uh, it's a disaster. And boy is it cold. But it's even colder in the morning. We wake up to a beautiful sunrise. like to stay, but we can't. We check out of uh, our ringside cabin at the Bright Angel Lodge, which, by the way, was originally established in 1896 at the head of the Bright Angel Trail, and renovated in 1935 by architect Mary Coulter. We take a short drive to the visitor's center for one of the most breathtaking views of the canyon, which at this point is 10 miles wide and one mile deep. We are at Mother Point, named after Stephen Mather, which was the first director of the National Park Service. We continue driving on the East Rim Drive. We are now driving towards the Desert View Watchtower to get one last uh, breathtaking view of uh, the Grand Canyon. And then it's back to Vegas to Route 66. The Desert View Watchtower was completed in 1932 and uh, also designed by architect Mary Coulter. And we have arrived. The views from the top are truly breathtaking. The painted desert to the east, then a big bend of the Colorado River and the North Rim over 10 miles away.
We take in the view one last time from the bottom. We stop on the way back at the Navajo Point, looking back at the tower. We have made that big traveler's mistake of planning ahead. We always seem to do that, I don't know why. We have tickets to a show tonight in Vegas, so we must be back at a certain time. So we reluctantly start driving west, still stopping here and there, but unable to linger much. One last time we approached the south rim of the Grand Canyon. After this last stop, it is virtually non-stop. We spice up the long drive by taking Route 66, which sets us back about half an hour, but it makes for a more interesting drive, at least we hope it will. First impressions, I have never seen a more desolate road in my life. We drive for miles without seeing another human being, well, maybe just one, this hitchhiker. Not even the Dalton Highway in Alaska felt this isolated. There are a couple of roadside attractions we want to visit, such as the Grand Canyon Caverns, but it feels so deserted, so desolate, it's kind of creepy, so we ultimately decide not to go in. Even at the motel, there's not a soul. Actually, let's get out of here before a long bearded guy playing a banjo comes after us. It is surreal. It's like we've gone to another dimension, an alternate reality. Well, at least there are cows. Yep, we are certainly getting our kicks on Route 66. We go through the town of uh, Peach Springs in Hualapai country. We encounter some rugged terrain along the way. Another point of interest along Route 66, according to the guidebooks, is uh, the Hackberry General Store. Here you go. A few miles further west, we also encounter the Ranchero. Another attraction of the past with this uh, green statue, which disturbingly reminds me of Fidel Castro, I don't know why. We also pass by the Outpost Saloon. And finally, we reach the town of Kingman, where we divert from Route 66 and take State Route 93, straight to Las Vegas. We once again pass by the Hoover Dam Bypass Bridge and into the state of Nevada. We're almost there as we see the skyline of the Strip in the distance. And we arrive to Vegas admiring this beautiful sunset. This time we're staying at one of the classic Las Vegas hotels, the Riviera, which dates back to the 1950s. The hotel is a little run down as uh, it has been in financial trouble for a while, but uh, if you're on a budget, go for it, it's, it's not pricey. Once in Vegas, we enjoy Sin City. We go to the Cirque du Soleil show Love, not my cup of tea really, actually the highlight of the night were probably the mojitos and the ambience at the room bar in the Mirage Hotel. And the nightclub, of course. Good times. We can't really show you much of this because, as you know, what happens in Vegas kind of stays in Vegas, 
so they say. On the next day, we go to the Bali Hotel, where we splurge at the Sterling Brunch at the Steakhouse. It's a decadent experience in gluttony you should do at least once in your life. It's a hundred bucks, but you get unlimited lobster, filet mignon, lamb chops, fine champagne, and so much more. I mean, I wish I had two stomachs. After this extravagant culinary experience, we hit the road again. This time we visit the Red Rock Canyon. It ain't no Grand Canyon, let's be clear about that, but it's just minutes away from the city and a beautiful place with a bunch of trails and this uh, 12 miles scenic drive. We explored the whole 12 miles, stopping here and there for the obligatory photo ops. We should really spend a whole day here and explore some of the trails and the natural beauty this place has to offer, but after passing by the visitor center, we decide that it's time to go back and enjoy the few hours we have left in Las Vegas. After passing by the famous historic sign, we go into the Mandalay Bay Hotel. It's a beautiful place with an artificial beach that is unfortunately closed due to renovations and the cold weather. We do enjoy one last drink famous mix lounge located on the 64th floor of the adjacent building and watch the lights turn on as the sun goes down as you can see i'm not much of a gambler <laughs> our winnings for the night seriously instead i'd rather bet that many of you and your friends will watch this video and all the other ones i've posted I hope you have enjoyed this short trip as much as we did. Coming up next, we begin our road trip from Miami to New York and explore many points of interest along the way. Check out the blog for all of our other adventures at roadnomad.com and subscribe to the YouTube channel youtube.com slash travelingrobert and send your comments or suggestions about future destinations to robert at roadnomad.com. I am Robert Morales, your host, wishing you pleasant travels. And as always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Bye now. Bye.